I'm Glenn Martin from the Hearing Dog Program in San Francisco, and uh, today I'm here with Don and Donna Forst, and uh, we're going to talk to them a little bit about their, their dog. He's being trained as a hearing dog. We're also going to show you some hearing dog sequences of training that should be helpful to you. So uh, good afternoon, and tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would, and uh, why we're training your dog. Well, I'm Donna. I'm um, the Director of Humane Education for well, speaking of your dog, here he yeah, is. Here he is. Cabo. Um, and this is my dog, Cabo, and I'm in the program because I have a hearing loss, and I am hopeful that Cabo is going to continue to improve and, and grow and uh, be able to help me with that loss. Okay, great. And Don will be your uh, helper today on one of our things we're doing, on the uh, what we call the name call, where the dog runs from person to person when their name is called. All right, thank you. We're going to go ahead and get started with our uh, training sequence. All right, we're going to do the uh, freshman level doorbell. Now, we have four different levels of sound work, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. A freshman level sound is where we get the dog excited. He can see the source of the sound. We call this the target area. And I'm going to tease him with this box full of treats. He's going to run to the sound. So this is freshman. Freshman means it's all a setup, it's easy, it's in sight, that's freshman level. So let's go ahead and get started. Cabo, would you like this? Oh boy. And we've already taught him this is full of treats. We've gotten him excited over it. So we walk over here, we let him see us set it up with a treat, and I ring the doorbell. Good boy. Good boy. Go. Okay. Good Thank you, Donna. And our whole goal here is to get the dog excited to run to the sound in this target area. Now, this time, Donna, we're going to have you um, stay back a little bit and wait until he eats the treat. Okay. Then say good boy and follow him up and give the second treat. Okay. Okay, so we'll do it again. Oh, boy. Are you ready? Would you like this? So you're going to linger about here. Okay, so here we go. Good boy, good boy. Good. And did you notice that the dog looked back at her when she said good boy? That's what we're looking for. We want this dog to start looking back, anticipating that she's going to come up and give him a treat out of the container. That was very good. This time we'll do it a third time. Practice. Um, Move, but move slowly. You're still moving when he when he uh, gets there and eats the treat. Keep moving, good boy, and then keep moving forward. Okay. So instead of stopping, just keep moving. Okay. okay. So let's go back. Now this is the first step that this dog has done a while ago, so he's used to this. This is freshman level. All right, you ready? Pretty soon I don't have to tease him as much because he knows the game. Okay, that was good. good boy. The only little critique that'll help you is a little quicker on the good boy because it should come right as he's eating it. Okay, our next step is we're going to keep it all freshman in sight, still holding him. We're going to move the target area a little further away so he goes a further distance. Okay. Cabo, look what I've got. Good boy. Good boy, yes, yes, here you are, here, 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 there it is. Very nice, <laughs> very good, okay, great. All right, so what we're going to do now, Cabo is doing very well at anticipating that you're on the way to open the box for the second treat. He's starting to come back to you even. Uh, so we're now we're going to have you lurk or stop about halfway. You'll still say good boy. He'll turn around and when he does, I'd like you to signal him to come back to you. Now we've already taught him to push and touch, so we're going to let him come back and alert you. You'll say good boy and ask him where and, and let him take you back again here. Okay, okay so we'll do that sequence. Right. So let's take him on back. Okay. Here's a treat for you. Okay. All right, Cabo. Good boy, good boy. Good boy. Here you go. 
That was great. So suddenly now, instead of just a one-way response, because you had him come back, now it's a three-way. And that's what the finished sound work response looks like. They go to the sound, they come back and alert you, they come back to the sound. Okay. And we're actually recreating steps that Cabo has already gone through. That should be clear. He's already been through these steps, but we're showing what the sequence is. So you're used to having one or the other of you out of sight when we do this game. We'll start with both of you in sight and fairly close. And then we're going to show how the distance is extended and how one of you starts going around the corner. Okay, and that'll just be done kind of smoothly, even though we did it over a period of, what, about a week, mm -hmm. maybe? Right. Okay, so I'll give each of you three treats, and you've played this game before. So again, start close on the first one, and then each of you extend the distance, and then maybe on the, th on the third time he does it, have one of you out of sight around the corner. Okay. Okay. I should get back farther than this, however. Probably, and, and I'll let you guys just talk and do what you do naturally, so just... Just play the game. Okay, that looked really good. Lots of enthusiasm and motivation is the name of the game. So that's what we're looking for. On the third one, you disappeared. Yes. He said, well, if he's not right here, he's got to be around the corner. Yes. This is one way we teach the dog to go back and forth and also to do the out of sight, which is important for freshman sounds. All right, this is a sophomore doorbell. They've gone around the corner. I'm going to show the dog the box. He already knows where the target area is. So we're introducing the idea of coming to some sound he hears that's out of sight. Okay, that's, a, that's actually a good thing. It's very motivating for the dog to come around the corner running to a sound. Cabo, look what I got. Okay. That was good. All right. Now again, wh what we can do this next time is don't be in such a hurry to get here. Okay. Maybe uh, as you just barely come around the corner, have him come back to you and alert you. Okay. And remember, if you give him a good boy, um, he's going to be heading back for you anyway. Okay. Yeah. All right. Come on, come. So let's try that. All right, buddy. I don't know how many of these treats you want, but we got more. All right. I'm waiting a little bit, building the anticipation up. Good boy. Good boy. Very nice. Good job. Excellent. There you go. All right. Now, there is one other step, which is junior, and we haven't really talked about junior. Junior would be where you just walk away with the dog casually. And then the sound happens without me teasing him with the box. No setup. So I think I think we're ready to try that. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and uh, take, take your treat. I'll take mine to put on there. And then just casually walk away with him. And let's see if he comes when the doorbell happens when he doesn't totally expect it. Very good. All right. You're well, senior. did he turn right around when he heard it? Yeah. Certainly seemed that way. Yeah, he, he ended did. up here quickly. He did. So now we can delay the time a little bit now on a junior. We can have him go back and be with you now maybe for 30 seconds before it happens. So it's really kind of out of his mind. In fact, he went back already. He heard me. <laughs> okay, so why don't you go back with him? Okay. And, uh, okay. So just go back and hang out for a little bit. And we're doing our countdown to 30 seconds. So we're just going to wait. He's not really totally prepared, but he's come from out of sight. 
So we're extending the time a little bit. And let's see if he responds now just to the sound. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, let's not really treat him this time. Let or just give him a tiny better. Yeah, we're gonna fill him up. He's gonna be over uh, loaded with treats here. Skip dinner. Okay, so that was very good, and you can see how you could gradually increase the time on it, where it's becoming more. You know, a junior sound. You know, it's gonna happen. He doesn't. And as we increase the time a little bit, now it's getting closer to the real world, mm -hmm. where sounds happen when you least expect them. Right now, he expects it a little bit, but it's right. not uppermost in his mind. So right. that's why he's responding so well. When we introduce a new sound, like the timer, we have to realize this is a totally different cue to him. And he doesn't necessarily know he's supposed to do the same thing with this that he is with the doorbell. So we make it easy for him, and we do that by going back to the very beginning, going back to a, a short, close um, freshman timer. So it's very close, it's inside, it's got a setup. Even though he's capable of running back and forth, he's got to learn to do it for this new cue. So we treat it as if it's a whole different thing. We don't have to stay very long at the beginning steps, but we do start there. Okay. Okay, so we'll move our target area. <clears throat> now, moving the target area is a good thing because now he knows this is something a little different. Okay, so let's hold him. All right, I'm now setting the timer for three seconds. That means, whoops, that's the wrong one. So I've set it for three seconds. I'll press start. It'll go off three seconds after I set it down. All right. Gobble, you ready? Very good. good. So right now, no problem. That's because he has all the cues he needs. He knows this is the same game, only it's a different sound. Same game, different sound. Really, when we teach a hearing dog, here's another way to look at it. We're teaching a hearing dog uh, 10 different commands that all mean sit. So we're teaching him sit in 10 different languages, but they all mean to do the same thing. Oh, that makes sense. See, so this is a different cue, but do the same thing. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll do it again. We're going to uh, place the treat there, set it for three seconds. Yeah, no, don't forget, let's give him one out of one the, out of the box here. Okay, yeah. I just gave him that other one I have. Okay, All right. good. So we'll uh, let this run for a little bit and stop it. So he's having no problem with this because of the setup. He knows the same game, okay? Very predictable to him. And remember, dogs do things based on their expectations. So he expects the same game. The next step then, after we practice this, would be to have you go around the corner. But it's important that I come and tease him and come back here. So um, you had a little problem with this before when you got out of sight. Where did you have problems, this way or this way? That way. Let's go this way. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to let him see me uh, set this. I'm going to go around the corner, and let's see what he does. Okay, that's probably close enough. Okay, so here I am, Cabo. I'm setting this for one, two, three seconds. You ready? Uh huh? I've got a treat here. Got a treat for you. You're a good boy. Okay, here we go. Hey, he made it. Good boy. <laughs> okay, he slipped away too soon, but that's actually a good sign. It shows he's motivated and enthused to do the game. He was raring to go. So this time, we won't let him get away, and we'll see if he actually comes around the corner. Okay, okay so let's go back. Oh, whoops, okay. What you may not have done is uh, this sophomore step of doing this setup. See, where it, the odds of him coming are about 90% right now. You ready? Because I'm making it really easy for him. Okay, so we set it down, and we turn it on. Great, perfect, very nice. 
Okay, just a tiny bit. We're filling them up so much with treats here. Okay. So no problem on this stage, right? We're doing a sophomore timer. I'm setting him up. I'm getting him revved up, ready to go. He's flying in here like nobody's business. I think what happened is you probably jumped ahead to junior too quick. I was farther down the hall that direction. You, you were further, and plus it may have been, yeah, not the immediacy of me saying, hey, I'm going yes. around the corner. you got to start close. Yes. And then you extend distance, and then you go to junior. Okay. Yeah, that's the sequence you follow. Uh, at the risk of filling them totally up with treats, I guess we can try one more here. Okay. Um, yeah, he's doing well. Where do you want to do that one? Uh, let's keep the same location. We don't, we don't want to mess with what's working here. All righty, look what I got. One, one, two, three. Here we go. Look what I got. And we're letting the timer continue to go off so there's that strong association of sound and treat. Okay. okay. And you notice when it's still going off, he keeps looking at you. <laughs> like, are there more treats coming? Okay. So this is very good, especially since he's had a little problem with being out of sight on the timer. Now we know you were a little too far away. We need to be closer. We need a little more of I'm going around the corner. So it's a shorter setup, and he's having absolutely no problem. So again, you're going to go back through the same sequence you went through with the doorbell, only don't do it too quickly. Right. I you realized know. there's one other thing that we did wrong. Yeah. The box. We weren't shaking the box mm -hmm. to tempt him. Yes, to tempt him, and this is one of the cues yes. that I, okay, I hear that box, I'm ready to run. Yes. I got it. I'm ready to go. I'm just waiting for that sound. Yeah. So yeah, the box had uh, suddenly kind of disappeared, and it's, the box is an essential part of this. This, this box is a target. It's a target he can smell, a target he can see, and a target he can hear. Mm -hmm. That's the best kind of target, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, okay. all three. So that's a powerful thing there to get him to run to the sound. Okay. And eventually with people who have these boxes, I've gone to their homes and I've noticed they're empty. And I said, do you keep treats in there? And they said, you know, I did in the beginning, but they don't need the treats every time now. They just love doing the sound work. So that's interesting. As powerful as this is, it starts them off well. And by the time you're done, you know, they just love the activity. Uh, but you can still keep treats in and give them to them now and then. But each target area will have a box that's out of sight. Uh -huh. So there's always the chance of reward. Uh -huh. Always the chance. Perfect. We just give it less often, but always the verbal praise treats a little less often. Okay. All right. Very good. You did a good job, Cabo. Okay, well, thank you. We had a good practice session today. Um, Cabo, as usual, is the superstar. He did very well. And... Um, we went back through some steps that he'd already done, as you know, uh, going from the freshman, um, you know, doorbell to the sophomore to the junior. We showed him doing junior sounds where there was no setup. We then went to uh, the timer, which is what we'd done in the last lesson, and he was having a little trouble with the timer when you were practicing. He wasn't sure about going, and my feeling was that maybe the progression had been a little too quick with a brand new sound. Um, you know what? What did you see different today from what was happening before? You made it. You made it so easy for him um, to keep his motivation up, right? Because he was within sight of the target area, and my mistake was I took him too far away ah. and expected him to hear the sound, right? And also, um, we didn't continue to keep the box in place by shaking it to tempt him. Yeah, and that box is an important part of yeah. it. Yeah. So we did make it easy. We went back a step. You know, we started here with. Uh, with the freshman sound, he did so well, we thought, you know, let's go ahead with an easy setup close by, shaking the box, let's try a sophomore, and he did equally as well on that. That's where to quit. It's so tempting when you can see how well he's doing at running long distances and out of sight and doing all of that to say, well, he should do that with the timer. Not yet, but it won't take long. You know, the sequence that'll happen is much quicker. And once he gets the idea that there's two sounds I play the game with, then we'll add a third and a fourth and pretty soon what he'll do is he'll say, gee, all these sounds I respond to the same way. Mm -hmm. and, but again, you're right, the motivation, making it easy, keeping his motivation up, that's the key. Um, if I were a dog, I'd like running back and forth for treats too. <laughs> right now it's all about the treats.
you know, it's all about the treats, but that's what gives value to the sounds. And eventually the treats become less frequent, but they love the activity. So he's doing very well, you're doing well, and uh, thank you for our lesson.